In the last video, we talked about how the world changed from a place that looked like this to a place that looked largely like this and how that changed humanity. Today, we're talking about the agricultural revolution. So what? Hello my most excellent students, welcome back. Today we're talking about the agricultural revolution. Who cares? Why do we talk about it in our social studies classes? Well, remember the agricultural revolution was a huge change in how people got their food. It went from a place where people typically got their food by hunting and gathering uh, to a place where people farmed to get their food. And that really changed human life. And let's talk about a couple of ways that happened. The first thing that happened because of the agricultural revolution was a huge population spike. We're talking 10,000 BC, there were 6 million people on earth, and by 1,000 BC, there were 120 million people on earth. That's a huge increase in just around 10,000 years, 9,000 years. So, big increase in population. That's the first thing that happens because of the agricultural revolution. Uh, the next thing that happens as a result of the agricultural revolution is this idea of civilization. And what is civilization? Well, I want you to think about civilization kind of like uh, you would if you go to a doctor. If you have certain symptoms, uh, they say, hey, you know, you got a fever, you got uh, red spots all over you, you probably have chicken pox, right? They look at the symptoms and they decide what illness you have. I want you to think of civilization like this. If you have a couple of these things, you are probably a civilization. So let's take a look at some of the things that civilizations have. Um, definitely one of the things civilizations have is a uh, food surplus. A uh, food surplus is, um, you know, having more food than uh, you need. The next thing uh, that civilizations typically have uh, are cities. Um, as you have a population increase, you've got a surplus in food. Uh, people tend to live near each other, uh, and so villages start to develop. Those villages then turn into cities. Um, social hierarchies. A social hierarchy is uh, where some people have more power in uh, society than others. So, for example, here you've got a king or a monarch uh, who has more, uh, more power uh, than the people uh, he ruled over. So that's another thing civilizations have are social hierarchies. Um, you have writing. Written language is a symptom of civilization. Um, monument building, architecture, also, um, also a uh, symptom of civilization. And you've also got government. Centralized government, where uh, there are people in charge of making laws, people in charge of uh, ruling over the society. You've got uh, religion, or shared value system, uh, and you've got uh, specialization, job specialization. Uh, so, you know, you've got people who can be plumbers because they no longer have to uh, grow their own food. So civilization uh, has these aspects to it. So when you hear the really complex societies, right, you're, now, you're no longer focusing most of your attention on gathering and hunting food. And because of that, uh, all these different things start to develop in society. But we're going to take a minute to focus on that last one, this one here, job specialization. How did job specialization happen? How did you have, why am I able to teach and not have to farm? Well, let's go back to this picture from our last video. You remember this where you've got one person who's able to grow all of this food here. And because that person's able to grow all that food, these people up here don't have to. Right, he's able to give his food uh, to them. Now, um, this also starts trade, right? Because let's say I have wheat or food, and you have wheat or food. Not a whole lot. There's no reason for us to trade. There's no reason for us to interact. But let's say 
I have food and you have a clay pot. Now all of a sudden, there's a reason for us to trade those things. So that's what starts to happen. You've got maybe this guy uh, becomes somebody who makes pots and this guy maybe makes tools and maybe this person is a priest. And they do these things in exchange for food. So different people are able now to do different jobs other than just farming. Let's talk about some of the things you may have seen people doing. You may have seen weavers, people who weave things, uh, rugs, carpets, clothing. You may have uh, stone carvers, people who, uh, as the name says, uh, carve stone. Uh, you may have had uh, potters, not like Harry Potter, people who uh, create pots. Uh, you may have had scribes, people who learn how to write and read so that they can keep records. Um, you may have had priests, people in charge of religion. Merchants who uh, sell things and trade. Uh, you may, and of course, you know, warriors. So, you've got all these different jobs that people are able to do just because this agricultural re revolution changed the way people have, you know, get their food. And now that there's a food surplus, one person can grow a whole lot more food, uh, they're able to exchange that food for these types of services and stuff. And let's, of course, not forget the farmers. Okay, so let's review really quick. You've got the domestication of plants and animals, right? This is the agricultural revolution we are talking about. You know, agriculture, farming. Um, you, you make plants and animals useful for humans. Uh, that's domestication. So you've got the domestication of plants and animals. And because you have that, uh, now you've got more food. So the population can increase. Um, you also have more food. So you've got a food surplus. And again, just like we talked about, that led to job specialization. And all of those three things then allow for complex societies or civilizations. Remembering those symptoms we talked about. And it's crazy how fast things change now. So here we've got a timeline of, you know, the first 200,000 years or so of human existence. And you've got here, you can see on this timeline, language started around 200,000 years ago. And then you have art. And then maybe some rudimentary tools. But take a look at how fast technology changes now. Between this time frame here, 10,000 to 1000 BC. Take a look at how fast things change. In that time frame, you've got calendars, bows and arrows, regular trade routes, sailing technology, uh, domestication of dogs, sheep, goats, horses, wheat, rice, chilies and potatoes, temple building, irrigation, writing, wheels, walled cities, copper smelting, plow farming, chariots, law codes, the alphabet, letters and envelopes, pyramids, and the 360 degree circle. And this is just a small amount of things that you get in those thousand years between 10,000 and 1,000. So things really speed up as far as uh, technology goes. Were you paying attention? Answer the next following questions to find out. What are eight symptoms of civilization? How does a surplus of food help create job specialization? What are four changes to human life that were caused by the agricultural revolution?